This is time now for the Yankees to really enter the race in the AL East for the first time this season in earnest. The Yankees right now only three out of the loss column behind the Rays and the Red Sox, and this is the time to make the move. And it's not just because you're within striking distance, so that's the obvious reason, but the Yankees have a chance to take advantage of both good health and good hitting while they have it. I mean, what did we see in this Royal Series? Judge, Sanchez, Voigt, and Stanton. All healthy, all hitting, showing power, and being a difference maker for this team. And considering how streaky this team has been, and the fact that, to be honest, there's really no evidence to suggest that all four of these sluggers have the ability to stay healthy for long stretches of time. So this is where the Yankees have to take advantage. This is a huge series. It could be even more important than, say, a series in August or even September if you believe this could be a turning point for the Bombers. They could be catching the Red Sox, too, at a bad time. Imagine this as your day yesterday for the Red Sox. They lose a game yesterday that they took a no-hitter into the seventh inning. They lose the series to the Rays, and they lost their lead in the division, Moose, all in the same day. Let's revel for a moment in the bad luck for the Red Sox last night, and it was a wild uh, win for the Tampa Bay Rays, and the opportunity here for the Yankees with their big four hitting and healthy. Now's the time. Yeah, I mean, and but we, I feel like we've said that before, right? Uh, I mean, Not when, with all of them healthy. It, I understand that, but with them playing a little bit better. Um, and, you know, Sanchez has been great. Judge has been fantastic. I mean, Stanton, you know, goes, um, you know, as the wind goes at times. Uh, yeah, I think it's a poor weekend. I don't think there's any doubt about it. The Yankees have won the last three series. Swept Toronto, took two or three from the A's, took two or three back uh, last two games against Kansas City uh, to win that series. Uh, you know, topped off by the 8-1 victory yesterday afternoon, and they're six games over the 500 mark. So, you know, I, I think it's the most important series, obviously, right now. I, I can tell you whether or not it is in July or whether it is in August. Uh, we'll see how the rest of the season does play out. And the Yankees are going into Boston, and they're feeling good about themselves. I mean, you mentioned about the health. They're playing a lot better baseball for the most part. Uh, the first Kansas City loss was mind-bogglingly bad. But uh, aside from that, the Yankees have played a lot better baseball as of late. So, you know, Sanchez has been... I mean, he has an opportunity to be the player of the month with how good uh, Gary Sanchez has been here in the month of June, you know, further stabilizing himself as being a, you know, a key cog to this lineup right now. And hopefully that does continue for Gary's sake. Certainly I'm rooting for him. And, you know, you look at Judge and you look at Sanchez and, you know, Voigt goes out and hits the home run yesterday afternoon. You get him back. That's that's good as well. Um, you know, there's still some issues with this team when you look at, you know, like a Glaber Torres when you're a little concerned maybe about obviously what we talked about yesterday with Aroldis Chapman. But Aaron Boone has said it time and time again, we as a team control everything in front of us. And if you really believe that, then this is a really important weekend. It's Yankees Sox. It's a fantastic rivalry. We know that historic rivalry. Uh, Yankee fans can't stand the, the Sox fans. Sox, Sox fans can't stand the Yankee fans. All of that. So uh, it's going to be fun up there in Beantown. And you feel a lot better about where this Yankee team is off the last three series as compared to the last time the Yankees saw the Boston Red Sox. Well, you don't want to go with the flip side either, because the last time these two teams faced each other, which was just a couple weeks ago, thought that this could be a nice little boost here for the Yankees, who are really just trying to keep their head above water at that point, although the pitching had been very good, and they go and get swept. And that was obviously just a, a, a huge dagger and kind of just illuminated all the things that were sort of wrong and going wrong with the Yankees at that time. And this feels just so much different and it's kind of like if not now when you know I don't know if consistency is going to be the Yankees MO this year we'd all love to see it and obviously that's what you strive for in Major League Baseball is to have some kind of consistency but how the sort of hitters are and just the boom and bust nature of a lot of these guys you know will kind of lend you to believe that they they may just go on streaks it might be that kind of a season and so with this now as an opportunity to get yourself back into this race and really, hopefully, 
you know, stay there. Like, that's the point, right? I mean, we haven't really felt good about the Yankees in terms of, like, when are they going to turn it on? When are they going to turn it on? They've been held back by all these different factors, whether it be bad base running, bad defense, bad pitching yeah. at times, you know, whatever. Jamison Tyone was great yesterday, so he deserves tons of credit because it had been a shaky couple outings for him over the last four, and yesterday he was fantastic, goes into the seventh inning for the Yankees, and it was just like a wire-to-wire -wire sort of whitewashing of the Kansas City Royals. But this, like, it, it just feels that to get yourselves at least right back into this race and then try to stay there knowing that things just might not go so perfectly here for the Yankees this year. Like, it might not be that perfect, sustained consistency. It might be the boom or bust. And so when you're booming, now is the time to try to pile on. Yeah, I, I, and I think they, they've already showed you that that's what they're going to be, right? Unless they completely change and rip off this unbelievable winning streak and then say consistently good the rest of the way. Yeah, I, I, I think for the Yankees, I, I want to come out of this week against the Red Sox. Certainly, you want to take the series. You want to continue the momentum and take your fourth straight series, all of those things. Um, and it might be one of those years where you have to ride the, the lows and ride the hot streaks. But um, you feel a lot better. It's the Sox, the Yankees, Boston has been a, a team that has surprised a lot of people this year. You know, Tampa ripped off that winning streak after, you know, they weren't really beating anybody earlier on in the season other than the New York Yankees. And you look at this Yankee team now is, I go into it, you want to take two or three. I mean, that's it. You want to continue the momentum here moving forward. You don't want to have Boston stymie the momentum. You don't want to have the ills that we've seen from this team and getting in their own way, whether it be defense, whether it be base running, lack of situational hitting. You know, the power, ironically, has returned since there's been a crackdown of putting substances on the baseball where the Yankees are hitting home runs in that lineup uh, like you expected to uh, them to at the start of the season. You feel a lot better. I certainly do. I'm not telling you that this is a championship team. No, no, take every series as it comes. They did what they needed to do it against the Royals. Uh, now it's Boston. You might be catching, as Maggie mentioned, you might be catching Boston at the right time this weekend up at Fenway Park, and you just want to continue the momentum here moving forward instead of having a step back. That would be the worst thing for this team right now because – things do look good you do have a better buy, a better um, a vibe around this team right now and you want to have that continue here up at Fenway Park well because we know that when this team is able to show their power which is what they did against the Kansas yeah, City which Royals is what they do that is that's like that that's you know you want to know you want to like show what when the Yankees are having fun you know and when there's the positivity around the team it's when they're hitting home runs like that's that's what I learned this weekend it's nothing else really compares great pitching even you know, fantastic, you know, clean defense, all that stuff. It doesn't matter. It's the home runs that lead to the positive vibes around this team. And that's certainly what they got this weekend. So I know for the Yankee critics out there, they say, listen, they're still a real boom or bust team. And you wanted to look in just in terms of like runs scored this year for the Yankees. I mean, I didn't realize it had gotten this bad. I mean, the Yankees are in third place in the AL East. They have 300 runs scored. That's only six more than the Baltimore Orioles. The run differential is a plus seven. If you want to know what the Tampa Bay Rays, it's a plus 76. Red Sox oh, plus 31. Oh, I know. The Toronto Blue Jays is a plus 55. Yeah, the Astros is a plus 144. I mean, that's just insane. But, like, you're looking at your own division there, and you're looking at how you've been able to even stay within this striking distance considering that run differential. I mean, listen, it's all about the power for the Yankees. That's really my point. It's got to come back. And with Voight and Sanchez and Judge and Stan all healthy, that's your best shot. So you have that sort of situation going on as the Yankees are going up to Fenway. And then yep. just sort of taking care of some housekeeping kind of stuff from the middle game of this Royal Series, so two days ago. We talked about a lot yesterday about Aaron Boone's decision to have a Roldis Chapman walk Carlos Santana to face Rivero, Sebastian Rivero, who was a catcher, rookie, had not got his first major league hit yet. It backfired on the Yankees. You know, Chapman ends up walking a guy who has never had a major league hit, they end up giving up the lead. Yankees end up getting it back in the bottom of the ninth inning. They win on a walk-off. Hallelujah. Everyone goes home happy. But what we found out yesterday before the game, which it, there was a lot more clarity about how that conversation went down. To be honest, Moose, I was really surprised because I defended Aaron Boone yesterday in terms of his strategy. I thought the strategy was a no-brainer. It was, it was perfect to me. I mean, I, and I'm not just saying playing the game on a sheet of paper as opposed to playing it in real life. Aroldis Chapman, there's no 
there's no doubt about it. He has been struggling over his last seven starts, right? Or his last seven appearances, pardon me. You have an opportunity where the splits of the guys you're facing are so ridiculously polarized, one up, one down. Why wouldn't you have a, a base open, walk one of the best hitters on the Royals to face a guy who's never had a hit? To me, it was it was obvious. What I didn't understand at the time, and we only got clarity about this yesterday, was that there was not a consensus on the mound when Aaron Boone left to go walk back to the dugout, and that obviously led to the frustration with the Royals' Chapman. There was a belief that Chapman thought he was okay to pitch to Santana. And, and Boone says, yeah, I, I can see why he thought that. I get back to the dugout, and I think to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute. We can't have Santana beat us in this position or put us, you know, to put us ourselves in that vulnerable spot. Let's intentionally walk him. Let's get to Rivero. So it was Boone sort of going back on his decision from the walk from the bullpen to the dugout. And again, I'm not against the decision. I thought it was the right move. Yeah, but to be honest, the communication with with Chapman there has to be better from Aaron Boone. Yeah, he no wore doubt. that yesterday. He admitted it. He said that he and Chapman had a long conversation and that they're all good now. But it added a lot of context to what we saw in that middle game of the series. Yeah, well, Chapman was ticked off. We knew that yesterday, and now you have an understanding why. I mean, and, and I hated the decision. Uh, you know, I would not have walked him. Um, I don't. When I've got one of the best relievers uh, in baseball, I know he's been struggling as of late. I said it yesterday. We don't have to go down that argument again, but um, I would never have done it. And I think it's just, yeah, terrible communication. It's a hit, boom, he takes Surprising. the hit. You can't go out there and, and do that. Um, he admitted that he made a mistake. Uh, you can't change the communication on a walk back or what you're going to do when you tell a pitcher one thing, walk back to the dugout and then do something else. Now you know why Chapman was as ticked off as he was after the game. Um, and I want to attack the hitter. I mean, yeah, Santana's a good player. I get it. He's not Barry Bonds. Uh, he's not Ted Williams up at the plate. Uh, I'm not walking the bases loaded, especially I'm also dealing with a guy that as, a, as of late has issues finding the strike zone. I didn't like it. They did it, and it's another knock on Boone here. Not a big one. It's just, and he admits his mistake. Uh, you know, he and Chapman had the conversation. He had a little bit more color to the story as far as why Chapman was ticked off. He had every right to be ticked off, and Boone, and Boone takes the bullet. I still think, though, and yes, he had a right to be ticked off, and it's, yeah, no it's kind of odd because, you know, that's really been Boone's strong point as a manager, one of them is that his communication with his players has been on point. Well, we know Gary Sanchez thought that maybe he didn't get communicated too fully last year when he was benched in the playoffs, but we all kind of laughed that off, like maybe that was more of a you problem, Gary, than it was a Aaron Boone problem. This one, though, Boone definitely has to wear, and he is. To his credit, he is. Now, he went a step further yesterday and said not only you know could the communication have been better, but now in hindsight he would have made the different decision and would have let Chapman pitch to Carlos Santana. And and I I, I still don't understand that. I, I honestly he made a yeah, mistake. He admitted no, but you have mistake. Santana. You're saying Santana's not Barry Bonds, but Chapman's not Chapman right now. And in, until he's I'm not the walking triple- the bases loaded with a guy that having that's having issues finding the strike zone. I'm just Dude. not. It's still on Chapman I'm, I'm just to not, not get out it. a guy who's never had a major league hit. That is so I, I, that I mismatch it. is so overwhelmingly in Chapman's favor that, like, to be honest, Chapman's pitched but Boone so admitted many he big made a games. mistake on two fronts. The and I don't think he, need, he wouldn't have done it. I think that <laughs> I he can he could apologize for the communication and wear that, but I don't know if he had to go as far as to say I wouldn't have done it again. I feel like that in you know he's Why? obviously trying to protect feels. the player. I That's think he's the way he feels. He feels like he he feels like he wouldn't have done it. He made a mistake in his judgment, so he admitted both mistakes. He communicated poorly with Chapman, told him one thing, did another, and then in hindsight, he said, "I made a mistake in the decision making and the tactical decision I made on the field." I he know. I just both don't. Mistakes. I don't. 